Hey, this is George Tab, and thanks for visiting me at myspace.com slash help George Tab. I'm reading from notes. Okay. First of all, it looks like it's going to be Clinton versus Giuliani in 2008. Gee, I didn't see that coming. And now that they've both played the 9-11 card, I think I'm going to vomit. Of course, the mayor of the universe only has those two numbers in his vocabulary. So nothing new there. But now Clinton shows photos and videos of herself with the ex-mayor and claims she's on the side of the people. Right. Listen, on September 11, 2001, I was there. I saw the whole fucking thing and almost lost my life. Everything I owned was eventually thrown in a landfill in Staten Island, but not before making me deathly ill. We were told the dust was safe, the air was safe, everything was safe. It felt like I was in that movie Marathon Man. Okay, so now I'm sick with, with what Bellevue Hospital diagnosis is polycystic kidney disease, PKD for short. It hurts like hell and there is no cure, but there's hope on the horizon. At least that's what the doctors tell me. No matter, many others are suffering from the ill effects of that awful day as well. Besides those who lost family members that day, and bless them very much, there are many New Yorkers who are sick and dying from this, and it seems to be top secret or something. Well, it was top secret. In 2002, President Bush, with all his infinite wisdom, decided to make all EPA stuff he wanted secret, classified as national security. Now certain people were no longer allowed to talk. At that time, I was trying to find a lawyer to help me out of this mess and just break my damn lease so I can move away and have money for a new place. And two law firms told me they can't do anything 9-11 related. When I asked why, they told me they didn't want to end up in Guantanamo Bay. And if I didn't watch myself, I'd end up in Gitmo myself. By talking about this shit, I was breaking national security. Unfucking believable they even told me the whole National Bar Association of Lawyers was afraid of this. Not believing this could happen in my country, I went public. People Magazine, MSNBC News Against Whitman, blah, blah, blah. But I also went on a cover of the Washington Post. The next day, I go to a senatorial hearing by Senator Clinton, who wants to hear the downtown residents' problems. She listens while people who are upset tell horrible stories. She maintains her composure and says she'll see what she can do. After the meeting, I run into her completely by accident. Or so I thought. I was looking for my man, Congressman Nadler, and my buddy, Joel Kupferman, from the New York Law and Environmental Justice Project, with whom I did tests in my apartment and found crazy amounts of chemicals. Anyway, Southern Clinton walks up to me, and she says, Hello, George Tab." I was stunned. Here was Bill's wife saying hello to me by name. So I say hello back and shake her hand. I notice she's got a firm grip and she looks you right in the eyes when she is talking to you. Good, I think. How are you feeling, she asks me. I tell her I'm okay and figure she must have read the Washington Post article since I was on the cover and she must feel the need to do something. How is your wife Wendy and your stepdad Nick? She then asks about my ex-wife and stepfather. I'm stunned. And how's dear Scooter, your dog, she asks me. She also asks about my brothers by name. None of this stuff is in the paper, and I know she's wearing an earpiece, and there are CIA guys all around. I tell her everyone is fine, and thanks for asking. After that, I met her assistant, who was very, very cool. She eventually helped me to move and get me set up in Phoenix. She was a lovely person who cared and probably really happy to get me the hell out of New York City. I returned to New York a couple of years later, wifeless and sicker than hell. I now know it's PKD, polycystic kidney disease. I wrote Senator Clinton a letter about my insurance company not paying for my third abdominal surgery for diverticulitis, and to my surprise, she wrote the insurance company herself. They still wouldn't pay the bill, but it was great that Senator Clinton at least tried. Okay, now I find out I'm really sick and find out there's going to be a program at Bellevue where they're going to treat me. 
It takes me almost a year to get in, and suddenly I find that they will only treat what they say is illness from the WTC disaster. Lungs, throat, stomach, and sinuses, plus psych stuff, which I have to admit, the psych department is really good because they do it out of St. Vincent's. But since my illness is in my abdomen and kidneys, they can't treat that. I ask about others with cancer from this whole thing, and they tell me that's not in the program either. Because... They could have gotten the cancer from anywhere. Just like I got an inherited disease, only it doesn't run in my family. So I'm pissed. Senator Clinton played me. I wrote her a nice long letter telling her of all this in the sweetest way I could, and she sends me a form letter. A form letter. Which brings me to my point. If this is how the soon-to-be president treats the first responders and residents who are sickened by the worst environmental disaster on American soil, what is she going to do to normal Americans? Seriously. She's got this whole big idea for national health care, which sounds like a dream come true. But if it's anything like the program she now has running, and that she's put her name on, we're all doomed. They treat everyone with meds like they do at the program now, and they let you die on your own. Meanwhile, the pharmaceutical companies make millions in government contracts as do the administrators who decide what's best for your health. Remember, folks, these are the people who run the post office. And now they're going to decide what we need and don't need? Wouldn't it be better to let doctors and patients work together to come up with what's best for them? A sort of compromise? Not the government? I mean, hell, Ronald Reagan said the nine scariest words are, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. So what can we do? Before we get to that, there's one other thing i got to talk about. The smoking gun thing. Because I've only been diagnosed with a disease you can only inherit, my genes are totally messed up. Like Chernobyl messed up. Like if I were to have kids, it would be bad. Really bad. I mean, I have a disease you can only get from your parents which my parents didn't have because I have both their autopsies. Yet I have it. I'm a genetic freak. And it sucks. I mean, hell, Spider-Man got bit by a radioactive spider and he gets all these superpowers, like being a real swinger. Then there's Bruce Banner, AKA the Hulk. He gets exposed to gamma rays and look what happens to him, the mean green fighting machine. But what do I get? Nothing but sick. And it's not only me, it's lots of other New Yorkers, and actually people from around the world with this problem. Anyone who's around long enough and breathed in that shit long enough got sick. We can all be genetic carriers of really bad stuff. It's like we're all patient zero. The typhoid Marys of the 21st century. And what does the government do? Yep. Just like on South Park. So yeah, it's a global problem. Okay, so what do we do, and how do we do it? Well, first of all, how about some real tests, like genetic ones? How about some real health care and admitting that the dust could go anywhere and get inside the body, and as our blood carries everything everywhere, why couldn't it carry the dust everywhere? How about paying for this now so that the whole world doesn't have to pay for it later? It seems to me that Senator Clinton is just passing the buck and letting the next guy deal with a pile of corpses that's bound to pile up. So here's what you can do. You can write her and tell her you want real health care and not the kind she's giving New York City right now. Tell her if she can't take care of her own constituency, then how can she take care of America? Tell her all these things, and let's hope she gets the message. Because if we get Giuliani, that drag queen's finger will be on the red button so fast we won't have time to express our freedom of speech. We'll be in World War III. Please help me and donate to me whatever you can. And let's hope it's not like that line in the Who song, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Thank you, bless you, and thanks for your time.